We're talking about surgical options for breast cancer. If you have questions, you can send them to the doctors at WLBT.com. Joining us now is Dr. Russell Brooks from Baptist Medical Center. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Breast surgery, whether I guess it's removal I guess of the tumors, probably what you do, right. is not, a, it, there is no traditional surgery here anymore, right? Well, there is and there isn't. Most women, you know, present with either an abnormal mammogram or a lump. And the question is, you know, once you make a diagnosis of cancer, what, it, what are your surgical options? And there are many options. The vast majority of women can have what's called breast conservation, which means they just, we remove the lump and sample lymph node, and then they can keep their breast. That's probably applicable to about 70% of women. And they have lots of other options. You can have mastectomies, which is removal of the breast, with or without reconstruction. And some women have even chosen uh, you know, prophylactic surgery, removing both sides. Um, it's sort of the ultimate prevention, with reconstruction usually. The, uh, when you actually, when you go and do just the the lumpectomy, does that make you at a higher risk of recurrence? Does that not leave some uh, risk the, there? There is a slightly higher risk of recurrence. M lumpectomy patients are treated also with radiation therapy, which reduces the risk of recurrence. We talk mostly in terms of cure rate. The recurrence rate is a little bit higher for lumpectomies, but the cure rate is the same as compared to traditional mastectomies. So. So yes. it's, it's not, it's really kind of a personal choice. Right, right. How many women are you seeing who are doing the prophylactic mastectomies compared, I mean, even just five to ten years ago? It, uh, a quite, a, quite a number. I see at least one new patient a week that wants that option. And they'll, um, it's based on the fact that there have been some younger celebrities have chosen that option. Um, uh, the fear of recurrence. Uh, it, personal preferences, there's, there's no one, we, we try not to recommend the option as such, we let them know it's available, have them see the reconstructive surgeon at the same time, shortly after they see us, so they understand what that is, but a lot of women come in asking for it. I have a question, and I, you may not know the answer to this, because I know you don't do the, the financial part of your business, but do some insurance companies cover that? Most of them, including Medicare and Medicaid, will cover prophylactic surgery and reconstruction. I believe they... It's been, over the last 10 years, that's changed a great deal. Used to, we had to really beg and plead, as it were. But now they really look at it as a sort of a, they're saving money in the long run. I mean, because it's ultimately prevention, what they're looking at. Well, I know it, it's, it's probably a little bit controversial, but I mean, what would, what would be pretty reasonable for a woman to consider that? Having a sister and a mother who had breast cancer, is that pretty good odds that you're gonna get well, cancer that, well, also? Well, that's a good point, but you, if a woman already comes in well, there's two ways to look at prophylaxis. There are women who have no breast cancer that are considering prophylaxis. And that's a separate category of patients. And those are patients with high family, you know, their family history is very significant. Or they may have had a genetic test, which is another subject. But if women come, once a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, she's at the highest risk group that there is. So, um, but they, the patients that have chosen the more aggressive surgeries have, usually have a family history. Uh, it's not just usually a personal preference thing. So. Well, I mean, it, and if you do have cancer in one breast, is it, uh, is it at all common for a woman to go ahead and remove the other breast? That's what we're talking about, where women will come in and say, you know, I've, I've got cancer in my right breast, for instance. I know I could have a lumpectomy, but I've, you know, I've talked to my friends, I've looked at my options, I've spoken with a plastic surgeon, and, and I'd like to consider moving, removing both breasts at the time of the, the surgery and doing reconstruction. And, so, and the yeah. thing is, breast surgery today is nothing like it was in terms of scarring and, and disfigurement, right? Oh, no. no. You, uh, 20 years ago, women were going, getting an anesthetic and waking up without their breasts. And, that, and in some states, they've even passed laws promoting you know, breast conservation. So, no, the, the, the options are many more tr uh, good reconstructive options. A lot of the techniques we're using just for biopsies are much more cosmetic than they used to be. And radiation itself is more cosmetic now. Dr. Rooks, some women, I'm assuming, choose to do nothing. Um, is that, it, do you see that often? It's rare. They occasionally choose it. We will try very hard to convince them that that's a bad decision. If you have breast cancer and don't have your cancer removed, it's ultimately fatal. Okay. All right. And yes. what, what, if, what about reconstruction if they choose not to do that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just recently had a patient who chose uh, young, healthy, 
she chose to not have reconstruction at the time of surgery. But I'm pretty sure she'll come back and want to do it. I think she was looking at it in terms of she just thought it was too much surgery at one time. And reconstruction can be done at the time of the original surgery and can be delayed as well. And both are fine options, and they give a great cosmetic result. So, so but if you do reconstruction when you have the breast removed, does, is, does that in any way increase your risk of recurrence? No, it's a, just a longer operation. Typically, the surgery can take as long as three to four hours. Uh, it's a lot to do, and uh, you stay in the hospital a couple of nights. So it probably invol involves two or three surgeons instead of one. Well, it's a long day for the plastic surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dr. Rooks, thank you so much. You're and thank you for your involvement in uh, you. breast cancer awareness and the power of pink. It's been an awfully successful month so far, and we hope to continue it till the end. Well, Baptist Breast Center is really doing a great job, and we're promoting especially reconstruction and our diagnostic team as well. Thank right. you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. And for more health news, you can log on to our website, wlbt.com, and click on Medical Matters.